Imagine if your phone could see for you. This could be really useful in low visibility situations, but more than anything, it should be useful for people who are blind. This should be possible because smartphones and tablets have some pretty incredible sensors in them. They know where they are in space and what's around them. If you could somehow communicate what the phone is seeing with an interface that doesn't require a screen, something you can touch or hear, it could actually be a pretty good replacement set of eyes. I've been thinking if I could do that, it might actually be a useful invention in contrast to a lot of the stuff I make. It took me a few tries, but I did eventually get a system working. This iPad is running an app that I wrote, which is talking to a kind of unusual case for it. And what it does is it's communicating what it sees into my hand through a tactile interface right here. This allows me to walk around blindfolded and not hit things. I think if I refined it a little bit more, it could be a braille display. It doesn't have enough resolution to do that right now, but there's no reason it couldn't, I don't think. So inside of this, there's a pretty cool mechanism, which I'll show you. I also spent way too much engineering time trying to prank my wife. She's kind of on red alert now, so I had to come up with a complicated scheme to get her right where I wanted her. So as usual, this project was a lot harder than I was thinking that it was going to be. Yeah, because you did it the hard way. If you just would have used a bunch of motors, like I said, it would have been a whole lot easier that way. No, what we should have done is made an entirely new actuator from scratch. I'm telling you, night and all is the future. All right, all right. So I did have a lot of internal debate on the best way to build this thing. There's actually several different all good ways to build this. I went with this approach because I thought it was the most interesting. There's a really cool mechanism inside of here. I also want to thank San Juan Steve for nerd sniping me with this idea and the comments from my last video. Also, thank you for having a name that is work safe, San Juan Steve. This totally distracted me from the project I was working on, which is making myself better at playing this violin with the help of some robotics. It may still be on hold because I have a couple of other really interesting projects that are competing for my attention. So I've been, I've been thinking a lot about guided missiles and if there might be any kind of constructive uses for them. And I finally think I have it. So imagine building the Iron Man gauntlet that flies like a rocket onto Tony Stark's hand. I've been thinking about this problem. It definitely is dangerous, but I think it might be borderline possible. That would be really cool. I'm, I'm also really interested in the idea of a baseball bat that doubles or triples the power of my swing with the assistance of a very modest explosive charge. I think I have a legal and interesting way to do that as well. If any of those things sound cool, you should subscribe. I give you my word that I will build some, all, or none of those things. I promise. Oh yeah, and I did finally set up a Patreon. If you want to help support me making more awesome things and videos, this is a great way to do that. These videos do typically take more than 100 hours each, and also quite a bit of money in material and tooling and other things. In exchange, I'll be giving more behind the scenes info and in-depth project stuff. So if that's interesting, there's a link in the description. All right, back to the project. I calculate that this thing gives me roughly 20-1200 vision. Not the best, but it's better than nothing. What 20-1200 vision means is that if I look at something with this that's 20 feet away, it will look as clear as it would look to someone if I took that thing and moved it 1200 feet away. Going into this project, I really wasn't sure how I was going to do the sensing. I was looking at using sonar sensors and off-the-shelf LiDAR unit. I was strongly considering using the Kinect, but seriously, where are you going to put this thing? Like, are you going to ask someone to just wear this on their head? You look like a complete idiot. Think about how people would treat you if you walked down the street with this on your head. The, the goal of this project is maybe something that could help humanity, not, not hurt it. And I then remembered that the new iPad has a LiDAR in it, which is awesome. The only problem is that it's only the latest iPad that has the LiDAR in it, and I don't have one. And if you really think about it, I don't have a choice here. I, I have to get this. It's to help humanity. Really? Humanity? It's going to help blind people. Let's think about it. Fine. LiDAR is one of those things that if it didn't exist and you proposed it to me as an engineer, I would laugh you out of the room. It just does not seem like it should exist. It's kind of like ball screws where if you look at how they work, it, it still seems like magic. LiDAR is crazy because it measures the time that it takes light to travel from the iPad to an object, reflect off it, and then come back. And this is crazy because light is mind-bogglingly fast. It's going around 670 million miles per hour. Unless it's light in the EU or Canada, in which case it's going about a billion kilometers per hour. So the time that it takes to go from the iPad to a wall is on the order of five nanoseconds. And to actually measure distance, you have to measure much more precisely than this. The lighter is actually sending out beams of light in all directions. It gives you a bunch of measurements on the surface of everything that it sees and how far away it is from the iPad. So this is an incredibly powerful technique for perceiving the world. It's how most self-driving cars actually figure out what's around them. 
The other big architectural question I had to figure out is how do I communicate what the thing is seeing using touch? The proposal in the comments was to use some kind of vest, but my limited experience with nerves and humans is that your torso isn't actually very good at sensing. So we're gonna do a two point discrimination test. Tell me if you feel one or two touches. One. It's just so funny, I'm like jabbing you with two <laughs> screwdrivers. <laughs> I know it's just how your body works, but it's really kind of funny. <laughs> All right, now turn around so I can test the front. That's probably not such a good idea, is it? Your back isn't so great for tactile input, but your hands are incredible. Not only do they have good resolution so they can distinguish lots of touches, they also are extremely sensitive. If this device could be a phone case, I think that's legitimately more useful. A vest, you have to wear it and have all these sensors, whereas your phone, you just have your phone and it helps you see. So let's imagine that the iPad is seeing this. It's a room with a door and a chair. What I do is I convert this into the simplest representation possible for navigating the space. Right here, there's something that you don't wanna hit that's very close, that's the chair. I have some stuff that's further, that's the walls, and then everywhere else is clear. I can actually communicate this into your hand because there's not so much information. If something is really close, I push really hard on your fingers at those corresponding locations. If something is there but not as close, I can push not as hard. Where it's clear, I don't push at all. This gives me basically a coarse map of what's going on in the world on my hand. So I also made a couple different views. So if you wanna zoom in and get more detail, I have the ability to zoom. I also have a experimental top-down view. So this is the chair, this is the wall, looking down from above. I can say that this is no-go, this is open, and these areas are unknown because I can't see through the walls with the LiDAR. Remember, I'm looking from this perspective, so I can only see what I can see through the doorway. I can communicate this to the hand the same way I do the other view. It's just a different view of the room. This view is kind of like the little mini map in a first person shooter in the bottom of the screen, if you know what I'm talking about. I think this could be a pretty nice view with more improvement, but this problem of things blocking other things happens a lot in practice, and so it can be really difficult to interpret what you're looking at. To make this work, I had to find a way to poke all of my fingers simultaneously with a controllable amount of poke, and that's hard because I would like this to be an iPhone case. And that means I really, this is about as big as I can go, kind of a, a grip shape. So if I just try to do the simple thing and cram a bunch of servo motors in here, attached to each pin, there's just no way that's gonna fit. Especially if I try to scale it up so that it can be a braille display, which I think is important and very useful. So the big challenge for this project was finding a way to move all those pins with a compact and ideally simple system. So what I wanted to do is make something that had a little metal pin that I could push into every joint of every finger. And the way that I did this, imagine that I have one of the pins that I wanna move pressed against a cylinder that I can rotate. If I attach a little wedge to the cylinder, when it goes underneath this pin, it's going to force it up. Then, if I make an even bigger wedge and I move my cylinder over, I can spin the cylinder and then push this pin up even higher. All that I have to be able to do is, con is rotate the cylinder and shift it left and right to control how high up this pin goes. And then because it's a cylinder, I can pack lots of ramps and lots of pins into it very compactly. Here's what some well-used ramps look like, IRL. That big bump next to them is used to trigger the pin locking and unlocking mechanism. It's basically another ramp. And this keeps the pins in place when they're not under a ramp. And then you can see that I can control where the cylinder goes with two opposing motors. By driving them together, it rotates. And by driving only one of them, I can move it left and right. Planning the motor moves for this system was a lot harder than I expected, mostly because I wanted to move one motor at a continuous speed and then have the other one keeping pace. It was a lot of quadratic equations. And now the pain and joy of making this in 60 seconds or less. This is the electronics, and the only thing that really mattered for proving the system is that they work. 
So I made zero attempts at miniaturizing them. And they're very simple. They're just a microcontroller, Bluetooth communication module, and then two big fat stepper motor drivers. If I was trying to make this a real product, I'd be trying to fit it onto a little circuit board, which there's no reason it couldn't. This is just what I had on hand. I should also point out that these motors are massively overkill for the application. It doesn't take much power to raise a little pin. I went with these partially because they're what I had on hand and also because it's convenient to have a lot of extra power when you're prototyping. Now we don't have to worry about stalling and other stuff. It's been almost a decade since I last wrote an iPad app and it's gotten a lot easier. And this is the app. It's really quite simple. I have all the controls on the side for the different views and for zooming. And these are all accessible when you're holding the grip on the side. There's a little preview of the depth data and this just helps me see what's going on. Ideally this would be running on a phone, but the LiDAR is only in the iPad. If Apple puts the LiDAR in the iPhone, you could imagine it could just be a phone with a little case on it, which would be really cool. That's pretty much all there is to this app. Apple makes it really easy to work with the LiDAR data. I spent a lot more time on the embedded system trying to get the motor profiles working, and it was kind of a waste of time, but I spent probably more time trying to get wife mode working than anything else in this app. I really wanted to see my wife walk into something, so I set it up to initially tell her correct data, then after a bit, start giving her bad data. Probably just a bug. It's a complicated system. This thing is really weird to use. It's a lot less intuitive than I was thinking it would be. You can feel all the pokes, but I'd think about every finger and what it's feeling to try to create a mental image of what's in front of me. Although I do think that if you used it a lot, it, it might become second nature. I remember learning the type was pretty similar to this. It also lets you see things like overhead obstructions so you can get under them. Although it's since it's only giving two levels of depth, it was hard for me to figure out where the obstruction actually was so and you can see me pointing the ipad up to see if there's anything above me i would really like to see more touch points and more control of those touch points because you really can feel the difference between these different pin pressures i think you could get a much nicer picture of what's around you if they could push with more more granularity if i was doing another revision or trying to make this as a product i would be trying to find some little tiny actuator that i could buy that would allow me to directly control every pin i think it's a cool proof of concept and Hopefully you like it as well. So a lot of people have pointed out that I have a lot of tools and that I may in fact even have a problem, which is probably true, but I would have an even bigger problem if all my tools got stolen. Though I do spend a lot less time worrying thanks to this video sponsor, Simply Safe. I spent most of my adult life and my adult dollars building out this shop and the idea of someone busting in and stealing my tools makes me wanna curl up and die. Although let's be real, if someone manages to steal this, they can have it. I'm only joking, that is not a challenge. Please don't rob me. Although if you do try to rob me, you're busted because Simply Safe detects basically every possible intrusion and calls the police immediately. You're gonna kick down my door? You just triggered my entry sensor. You're gonna break my window? You just triggered my glass break sensor. You're gonna cut a hole through my wall? Say hello to my motion sensor. Then wave to me and the police dispatcher on my HD security camera. You're gonna try to break in when the system's disarmed? Boom, got a panic button. Simply Safe protects against outsiders, but it also protects against me. And honestly, with all the stuff I get up to, I'm probably the biggest danger here. I've got a fire alarm. If I accidentally leave a smoldering heap in the basement that catches fire once I'm gone, I'm gonna get notified. I've got a carbon monoxide sensor. If I leave my jet engine running and it makes a bunch of carbon monoxide, it's gonna let me know before it kills me. The number one thing for me though is the automatic deadbolt. The number of times I've come back to see if the shop is actually locked is way too high. You get notified if you forget to lock the door, you can lock it remotely, you can check it, super handy. So if I was gonna rob your house, the first thing I'd do is I'd cut your power and your telephone. Although if you had Simply Safe, I'd be a fool because it has a battery backup and uses cell service. It's super reliable. So you just order it online or over the phone and they ship it straight to your house. You stick the sensors wherever you want them and hit a few buttons and that's about it. It doesn't even take an hour. And it's only 50 cents a day with no contract. That's cheaper than my previous security system, which had a contract. So have a lot more peace of mind with Simply Safe, knowing that you're protected around the clock from basically anything you can think of. Visit simplysafe.com stuffmadehere to learn more or click the link in the description.